this or this. Cleat for aft position. My name is Paul Swift, and this is the cycle point. There is a lot of information out there that says the cleat might be more this way or it might be more that way. Now, some of you are going to say, hold on, you can't just blanket randomly say forward position or back position. And to some degree, they're right. However, people that have been in fitting a while and have been working with shoes pretty much and are in the modern era of fitting, they're going to say the cleat goes back. So for those of you that don't want to watch the rest of the video, here I'm going to suggest this is the cleat position. Okay, just could be blind, push it back. It's gonna be better than most fits there are today around the world. But what is four aft cleat position and how do we determine it? Well, there's a lot of information that says it'll be further forward. There's a lot that says further back. However, let's talk about maybe how that originated. So what do we talk about cleat position? We're gonna talk about the big toe. Call this the ball of the foot, the first med head and going straight across through here, that being the center of the pedal or center of the pedal spindle or the center of your cleat. This is the fifth. Some people will talk about the fifth now. I view this as kind of a range, okay? So this is first through fifth. What do I mean by that? Well, that means on a lot of shoes, you're gonna have near the ball of your foot, that's where you're gonna want, or some people will identify as the center of the pedal spindle. Today, more people will look at more the fifth and bring the center of the pedal back. So, what are we talking about when I say center of pedal, center of pedal spindle? Here's a pedal. Center is right here where the pedal spindle goes. This goes into your crank arm. Center of the cleat. The center of the cleat, therefore, then goes over the center of your pedal. So, here's your cleat. And most of them, especially like a lot of the indoor folks, are going to have the look Delta style. And there will be a line right on it indicating where the center is. So, so a lot of people will find and identify their first med head, the big toe or the ball of the big toe. And they'll maybe identify the fifth. And so what we do at Bike Fitting, we've been doing for years now, is we slide it further back closer to the fifth. Now... I've seen some things on some of these forums, and the reason I'm doing this is because someone said, would you share? And I disagreed with some of the things that are out there, and it's not that I disagree with the people. There's just a lot of old information out there that hasn't been updated, and the internet works that way. You keep clicking on it, and it keeps staying up near the top. Well, where did all this stuff originate from? Well, I'm going to make an attempt to try and share that with you. This is not an old pedal per se, but let's say it represents one. When I get an old set, and um, I'm going to redo this again. And so what we have here is, where did the cleat four aft originate? Well, it was with the older shoes, basically. And they were not nearly as stiff. They were bent a lot more. They had a lot more play and give in them, where today shoes are much stiffer now. Very hard, very rigid. And what happened is, is this was back in when you had to have a, a cleat with a line in it, and that went into your pedal. And that line then therefore went into your cleat. A little easier to do than um, when you're actually stepping on it. So that's in there, and then you would have a toe strap. Now, part of why why this sort of cleat for after under the ball of fit uh, still hangs on is in the old days, when I would say the old days, I was right at the end of what I would call the end of the older, softer shoe. Yes, this is my shoe. It literally had to take this shoe to the shoe repair man or cobbler and they literally tacked and hammered the cleats on. This one has an adjustment built into it, but it was tacked and hammered out with nails. Okay, so what we did is we would ride this. We would ride no cleat on here at all, none. We would ride it in here and then it would create a couple lines. See, there's a line there and there's actually one underneath here. It's kind of hard to see, but it would put a line in your shoe. These two front and rear plates here would put a line in your shoe. And that's how we determined actually rotation and where your cleat would go. Part of why we had to save the ball of the foot is because the shoe flexed a lot, it gave. And when you have a soft shoe, you can't put the, you know, you can't put the cleat further back because that's on a part of the foot that is uncomfortable. See, the ball of your foot is, is hard. I mean, it's tough. You can, you can stand on your toes, you can hammer on it. But when you put the cleat further back, that's a softer part of a more, um, tender part of your foot. So the ball of the foot really originated with the old style shoes and pedals. 
Now, it's a little contraindicated because as you went further back, the softer shoe could mush more. It could bend down, okay? But the problem is when you put the cleat further back, that little cage in the back, this cage here, would become uncomfortable. And that's really one of the things that, I'm not sure what originated, why the ball of the foot was up there, but it's definitely one of the things why it stuck and stayed there for a while. But I can tell you, I was experiencing as an athlete, and I was a track sprinter, and they would say, put it further forward because it's more powerful. I've never seen a single shred of data that says a further forward cleat is more uh, powerful. I've never. And so I was always kind of cheating it back a little bit because this is still a toe clip and strap cleat, but the shoe's getting a lot harder. These are some custom shoes I had made back in the day. They've seen some little wear here. And it's hard to tell, but I was set up once and there was a line there. I actually moved them a little bit further back. Now, today, I would never even put them here. I'd go all the way back. Now, so that's where sort of the ball of the foot originated or came out. But shoes have changed. They've changed tremendously. They're much stiffer. They're much harder. We're able to bring the cleat further back now. Up here just doesn't make sense. And... All I got, hey, just go try it yourself. You don't have to believe me. So we go further back. We look at the first uh, met head or the ball of the foot. We look at the fifth. We want to try and get that center of that pedal spindle closer to the fifth. This just could not be done in older shoes, and some of that information still hangs on. What has changed in addition to not just a harder shoe is the volume of the shoe is increased. It's still a low-volume shoe. But we can actually stick things inside the shoe now. We can actually put a better insole in there. We can actually put wedges inside the shoe and outside the shoe. We can actually do something now to the heel that would affect it. But on an old soft shoe, when I did something to the heel, it just didn't affect further up in the shoe. And the cleat was so far forward. So the good thing has happened is that we've come a long way in cycling shoes. We now also have this type of pedal versus this type of pedal. So we have the pedal systems have changed, the cleats, so the, therefore the cleats have changed, the shoes have changed, and so there, that's why the ball of the foot over the pedal spindle is, is an old thing, and the new thing is really, is to get it back. Some people are gonna wanna go and measure exactly where is the fifth med head, where is the first? Let me tell you, just push the cleat all the way back. That is going to help tremendously. Now, there might be one out of 100 is gonna say, I felt better the old way. Fine, put it forward. You don't have to do it. But one of the big changes, too, that has also happened and why this doesn't work as well on some shoes as the others is we have these three holes here, okay? What has happened is a lot of cleats, when these were first developed, couldn't even get far enough back. And so some brands, these holes now, are a little further back on the shoes. They're drilled a little lower. So when I hear people recommend, let's say, CD, for example, those holes are still pretty far forward. They haven't moved back yet, but a lot of other shoes have. And so further back, going to be a lot more comfortable. Give it a try. Be careful of all the information out there. You can call and ask questions anytime you'd like. I want to share some more. I'm going to redo this again when I find like the actual real uh, equipment, although this is very much representative of what was going on. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm sorry this was a little long. There was a lot of information to cover if I was going to give you a history of maybe where this originated from and why it's changed. Shoes have changed. Pedals have changed. Materials, all these things. Further back, way more comfortable. And I do believe I've seen a little data that says it's more powerful. One last one. I do remember there was a gentleman by the name of Chris Kosman. He uh, is an ultra endurance athlete. He runs Furnace Creek 508. He, a long time ago, was saying cleats should be further back. And we were having like this disagreement. It wasn't that I disagreed that the cleats shouldn't be further back, because as I showed you, I'd already cheated it a little bit on my race shoes. Um, I didn't think the shoes were ready. Now that the shoes are ready, like we have this great conversation about that. So I hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Have a great day. Enjoy your ride.